So this is the box it came in, uh, straight from Kickstarter, uh, unbranded, unpackaged, obviously, straight off the, the construction line. Uh, there's a little manual inside, and then the device itself, camera meter, and two cords that come with it. Uh, camera meter looks pretty sweet, nicely, uh, nicely designed, nicely cut, nicely shaped, um, and fairly compact for, uh, for what it does. And the two cords with it inside the box, one of them is uh, the USB cable, which is just your typical USB to mini USB plug, and that connects to the camera. The other cable is USB on one end, and it's kind of like a, a Nokia phone charger end on the other, and that plugs in the side uh, there, and that's how you charge your device, plugging into a, a laptop or a computer or something. So uh, this USB plug sits on the other side and you plug that in. The mini USB plug then gets plugged into the side of your camera and uh, turn the camera on so that the device will be able to pick up the camera once we've connected everything up. The getting started manual that comes in the box is fairly brief. It has quick start instructions on what to do to set everything up. So turn the device on with the power button on the side. Uh, the camera made a logo comes up and everything initiates. What we need to do to connect our device to our camera and to the camera meter itself is to download an app from the App Store either on your iPad or your iPhone. If you search for camera meter one word there is only one result. Once that's installed you can open the app up and there are three things to choose from on the iPad. Uh, the remote camera searches for the device and any cameras that are connected to it. What we need to do first on the iPad is go into our Wi-Fi settings and instead of the Wi-Fi that we have usually we choose camera meter so it makes its own Wi-Fi network to begin with. Once you select the camera meter network a spinning wheel will appear. That's normal. Consider it connected and go back to the app. Now when you go into remote camera you'll see that it's come up with the camera connected to the camera meter itself. Under network settings if we uh, choose join known networks we are then able to connect to a Wi-Fi network. You add in your password, select done and it will connect to your Wi-Fi network. From now on you can run the camera meter via your Wi-Fi network rather than the network it creates itself. Once those settings have been input the camera meter will connect and it actually gives you the IP address that it's connected to on the face of the device. Now we're ready to go. Exit out of the settings and now you can connect to your device and there's our screen. From here we can adjust our ISO speeds from 100 right up to 25600 on the Mark III. We can adjust our aperture obviously depending on the, the lens that we've got um, from 1.4 to 22 and our shutter speed from 30 seconds right down to 1 8 thousandth of a second if your camera supports that. You can also adjust our white balance to any of the white balance settings on our camera. Color temperature, flash, cloudy, or manual. Once we've set up our settings on the app, we can simply click the camera button and it will send an instruction to the camera to take a photo. Once that JPEG has been sent from the camera to the app, it appears and will also give us a histogram in the bottom right corner and obviously this one's a little bit overexposed so we simply scroll to a new setting select 1 1 25th of a second it's looking a little bit better maybe we could go to uh, 1 250th and that looks a lot better. Once we've taken our images we can select between them simply by clicking on the image 
in the film strip in the bottom of the screen. And that'll go back and show us our histogram in the bottom right. Want to have a look in, you can just scroll as you would with any other image on an iPad and have check out the detail, move around. Tapping it um, jumps to full screen. So full screen being the actual width dimensions of the, the camera as it takes it. Up here in the top, we have some buttons that don't actually do anything. I think that'll be coming in a future version of the next app, perhaps. Uh, we can save to our album on our device with one click. We can also set up time-lapse photography with five minute, 15 minute preset intervals. We can change them. It tells us how many frames it's going to take for a certain length of time with a certain interval. So if we change the intervals, it actually changes that frames expected to be taken. And it gives us a readout of how many seconds of video we're going to get at 24 frames a second. The interval can change uh, in minutes and seconds, but really it won't actually start until 10 seconds simply because of the processing required to send images to the device between images. You don't really want it to be any closer than 10 seconds because uh, that may end up with a backlog. So if we set it to five minutes with 10 seconds in between, that'll give us 31 frames and it counts how many frames left and it tells us what the interval was. And you can see that the, uh, the number of frames required to take goes down every time it takes a photo. Quite a cool way of keeping an eye on how your time lapse is going from the comfort of your dining room or your living room while your camera's out, pointed at the stars perhaps. Right, so let's stop that. And uh, the other th function it has is a timer function, self-timer for potentially uh, taking family photos and being in the photos yourself. Whatever you may need a self-timer for, you can also change the seconds between 5 and 30 seconds before it starts and the interval between the frames. Uh, simply by scrolling your finger around in a circle, it'll, it'll change all those, uh, all those settings. And the interval goes uh, from 10 seconds to 30 seconds. So the, the time in between each frame taken and the number of frames you want to take. So maybe we take three frames, start in five seconds. So there's a countdown. and then with an interval in between each. I've sped this process up because 30 seconds of waiting, not so exciting. If we push the home button, we go back, we can click on session preview, uh, click on the camera that we want to preview, and uh, we can look through the photos that we've taken without uh, the danger of potentially taking any more photos. So that's a good way of giving it to your clients so they can s look through and have a look at how the shoot's going without actually being able to take photos themselves. Uh, the iPhone app works very similarly. Um, obviously a slightly different layout, but connect to the camera, take a photo from the iPhone. The iPhone will download the image. Um, Everything works in a similar way. We can change our shutter speed and our ISO and our aperture. And again, the white balance to all of the same settings that we could in the iPad version. We don't have self timer, um, plus the other three icons that don't work in the iPad version, but we do have the time lapse setup available from within the iPhone. We can also save to the photo album if we allow the app access. And we can go into the local folders, just like we can on the iPad app, and look through the photos that we've already taken and added. So that's the iPhone app.